Dan. No, yeah, it's been a long but productive week. A lot's going on. I am again excited about where everything is headed uh, for Rick Wallace Enterprises and all that entails with his subsidiaries. Uh, things are, you know, in a real, I'm, I'm in a real good place personally. Uh, still, you know, anytime you've got just just this one little element element of my life, 13 kids, anytime you've got that, despite the fact most of them are grown, uh, uh, you, you always have something going on. There's always something happening. When you come from a big family, uh, there is a lot going on and you have to get through that. But all in all, man, uh, I love who I am. Uh, I love the life that I've been able to live and the life that I'm still living and I look forward to the life I still have and I'm excited about that. Um, with all its challenges, I'm just really truly uh, elated about who I am. And this is coming from a conversation I had with a young brother uh, that I work with. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't even cl uh, classify it, classify it or categorize it as a mentor mentee relationship because we pour into one another. This young brother has been instrumental, but he dropped me a text, and I talked about it in the video uh, a couple of days ago. But he dropped me a text a couple of nights ago, and he was just saying, "Man, I was sitting here and I was really reflecting on life, and I realized that I had become the." Uh, man of my childhood dreams and yet I had never really taken time to embrace it or acknowledge it or be able to really truly celebrate it because I'm so busy trying to become I'm so busy trying to acquire I'm so busy trying to uh, uh, be what I'm supposed to be for so many different things and I felt that I felt that to my core uh, and so right now I'm just in a place where I'm celebrating me. I'm celebrating the person that I am now, the person that I've become. Uh, I am definitely striving to be something better, but I am celebrating the person that I am and what I've been able to do in my life into this point. I am really, truly excited about who I am and where I'm at right now. And I'm, I am, I'm, um, uh, intensively uh, anticipating what is to come and what I still have left to do. Uh, with that being said, look, man, I'm not going to be long today, but it's just something on me that in the midst of this celebrating my, myself uh, and challenging myself, I'm looking at where we are as a people and I'm concerned. I'm concerned because we tend to get caught up in the uh, superficial things um, as uh, Dr. Claude Anderson would say, we tend to major in the minor. Uh, and that's a problem. When you're majoring in minor things, the people who are dominating and mastering the major things are also dominating and mastering you. And that means us because I consider myself to be a part of the collective and there is no separation of the collective based on socioeconomic status. So what that means is just because somebody's doing better than somebody else does not eliminate them or exempt them from the realities of being black. You may have access to a few more things. You may be able to navigate in a few more or uh, some different spaces. But at the end of the day, your blackness leads in everything you do. It precedes you. You walk in a room, the first thing that is recognized is that you're black. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're wearing. It doesn't matter, um, you know, uh, what you're saying. The first thing that is going to be observed is your blackness. And if that is what you're going to, if that's what's leading for you, then that is the primary source of your identity, whether you like it or not. And you have to learn how to manage and handle that. I was having a conversation with Dr. Michael Blanchard probably 12 years ago, 13 years ago now. And he was asking me why there is so much... Um, in effectiveness in what it is we're doing um, or attempting to do as a community and 
uh, why there's so much information out there and yet we seem to not grasp it, why there's so many different things that are out there that are right within our grasp that we can reach out, touch and use and yet here we are not doing it and my response in 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 the immediate and quick response was facts mean absolutely nothing to the conditioned mind and um i thought about that and i thought about that and it was simply a reflection of the years i have studied in human behavior and the power of the mind and the programming of the human mind and we have been programmed for a number of different things. We have been programmed to view things through the lens of scarcity. So when you view things through the lens of scarcity, you tend to compete with other people for things that you don't have to because there is always an abundance if you know where to find it. But when you have scarcity, you will see those who you should be helping as those you are competing against. And it creates that. Uh, there is another need to be the one in preeminence because there's only a few spots where you can experience Express your power as a man so men black men tend to compete with one another instead of collaborate uh, there's so much going on in the grand scheme of things because of how we've programmed our experiences here that have programmed us our personal uh, evaluations and assessments of how life works based on what we saw in our homes growing up has programmed us. Uh, what we see in the media consistently that paints a certain narrative of who we are programs us. We will literally look at uh, others and see them as enemies, as the dark blot on the socio, uh, on, on the social uh, canvas of this this world we we call or this life or this reality we call ours it's amazing to me how this works but they'll paint a picture of us and, and we talk all the time about microaggressions like white women clenching their purses when we walk into the elevator nobody clenches their purses more than another black person when a certain type of black person walks up and it it's the programming it's the programming and we will sit up and be more afraid of them and never really realize that some of the greatest enemies are the ones that we've been told that are harmless think about the greatest atrocities committed in this country by people from this country and think about what they look like yeah we've done some things we harm one another and we did we've got some things we definitely need to work on uh, I'm not playing the victim card but what I am saying is the images that are portrayed and painted for us are part of the propaganda programming machine that tells us that we are our own enemy and in ways we are because we don't know how to confront the things in front of us. We are uh, ignorant of so much of the dynamic. And I told you, because we don't know how things work, we are consistently being mishandled, misled, um, and mistreated. And that's a problem. And so, again, my challenge to every person that watches this is to find a space where you can become informed, where you can learn, Pick up books, read it, do research on history, do research on policies, do research on politics, do research on financial development, do research on financial access. Go back and read uh, Black Power. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, Black Labor, White Wealth. Go back and read uh, Powernomics. Go back and read uh black skin white mask go back go back and read those those books read the isis papers read uh breaking the psychological chains of slavery uh go back and read uh some of the things that have been put out there read dr amos wilson read dr naeem agbar read uh john dr john Heinrich clark read dr yosef ben yakinen read uh tony browder read uh Dr. Um, Joy DeGruy. Uh, and uh, there are a number of other uh, others out there you should be reading and studying. Hell, I've written 28 books. But go out there and find those people that have invested their lives into understanding certain dynamics within our total social construct and go out there and read them, study them. If they've got programs on, get behind those programs because 
we are the answer to our enigmatic issues. We are the answer to the intensive problems we engage. We are the answer. We're never going to get them to fix our problems. They're never going to educate our children to overcome them or take away the power that they built. That has to be an inside job. That has to be us determining we are going to do something about what we are experiencing. And I am challenging each and every person that watches this. Share it with somebody. Sit down and talk about what you do know talk about what there is to know, ask questions about access and links and all the other different things that are out there, and then determine what you are going to do next. There has to be, um, there has to be um, a move and a decision to do something different. And that's my challenge to each and every last one of you. It's time to do something different. So on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Uh, I'm pulling up. I'm, it's been a long week. Like I said, even though it's been a very positive week, it's been a very long week. It's been a very challenging week. I'm going to get in here and talk a lot of noise about a little of nothing uh, with the guys. That's what we do. Um, but at the same time, my mind is always on how to be better. And I want to challenge you to do the same thing. So on that note, I'm out. Uh, look, if you believe in the work we do, look in the description box and look at the ways that you can give to support the work we do. Uh, and the work we do is intensive. We have a research center uh, we, where we've done over 80,000 hours of research over the last 30 years. We have a program development component and element of the Odyssey Project where we really build programs like Black Men Lead, uh, a right of passage initiative for young black boys to help reduce African-American adolescent and young adult male violence. We have programs for battered and abused women. Uh, we have programs for addiction. We have programs for uh, mental health, and we're working real heavily on that to integrate and make it more uh, receiving to black men who are the least likely to seek help in the area of mental health and mental illness. And we are working to do this and it is all self-funded. So again, I'm asking you guys to look inside and help someone who is actually trying to get something done. I, I, I'm not good with the optics because I'm not there with optics. I'm not there trying to paint a good picture so the right people like it. I'm there to actually be effective. And that means you can't have the wrong people's hands in the coffer because they'll give you the money to do the optics, but they don't want the real work done. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you 30 years in the game, all the things that look good that you get excited about and see and all of a sudden you look up and the same conditions consist in that neighborhood and yet there's a million dollars two million dollars ten million dollars flowing in it was never meant to work it was meant to be an optic presentation where people sit up and go man and then they have now the the ability to say man we pumped millions into that it's just not going to work no you took the linchpin out of the program so the program wouldn't work you kept all of the dressing and the optics to make it look good so everybody looks like they're trying but nobody is actually being effective i would much rather be effective in the way that i can even though i would love to do it on a grander scale than to sit up and play the game fill my pockets with money by creating optics and not getting the job done. I want the kids' lives that I touch to actually be changed. I want the kids' lives that I touch, the women's lives that I touch, the men's lives that I touch, to actually have something that they can hang their hat on, hang their grab, grab hold of and get traction with and change their lives, elevate their lives. And so if I had to do it one person at a time, I would rather do it that way. But I'm asking you, be a part of the solution. On that note, look, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here again thank you guys for the love for those of you who have rolled this out with me uh on multiple channels as we battle uh to stay on deck i really do appreciate you being alone for the ride but there's so much other work to do and i hope that you continue to go along with us on that note i'm out of here you guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day